In this visual how-to, we're going to look at accessing public web services from a Silverlight application that's delivered as a Sandbox solution. SharePoint 2010 introduces the concept of the Sandbox solution. Sandbox solutions run in a separate process outside of the W3WP process where SharePoint is executing. Isolating a sandbox solution promotes farm stability by preventing poorly performing solutions from impacting the SharePoint farm. As part of the isolation strategy, however, sandbox solutions are not allowed to make calls to external resources such as databases or web services. This restriction, of course, can be problematic for a SharePoint developer whose solutions may need to access these external resources. One approach to solving this problem is to use a Silverlight application delivered from a Sandbox solution to call these web services. Because Silverlight solutions run on the client machine, even though they're delivered from a Sandbox solution, once they get to the client machine, they can make calls to publicly available web services. And what we're going to do in this sample is we're going to show how to call the public Music Brains web service, which allows you to uh, search for inf information about artists and uh, music albums. And we're going to get that information back from this publicly available web service. And then we're going to write it into a SharePoint list to show how we can use a sandbox solution to access the public web service and interact with SharePoint objects. Just as a brief background, we can take a look at the Music Brain service here. If we go ahead and pull the URI, the service that we're going to be talking to is a RESTful service. So we can take a look at a sample URI here from the musicbrains.org. And you can see that I'm specifying a limit for the number of rows that should come back here, which is 10, the format of the information that I want, and then the artist that I'm interested in retrieving information for. If I take that URI and simply put it inside of a browser, then what's going to come back is the XML representation. And you can see here uh, that I've got back some titles for some album information from the group Boston. We've got uh, their first album here. Scrolling down just a little bit, we can find uh, some additional information. You can see that they're coming from MCA Records. Here's the next release with greatest hits. You get the idea. So then once we have that information, we can parse that and save it into a, a SharePoint list. Now, the strategy for delivering this Silverlight application as a sandbox solution involves either using a visual web part in the sandbox or a site page delivered to the sandbox. Normally, visual web parts are not allowed in sandbox solutions. However, the Visual Studio team did create an extension to the Visual Studio tools for SharePoint called the Visual Studio 2010 SharePoint Power Tools. These SharePoint Power Tools, which are available on the Visual Studio Gallery, allow you to create a sandbox compatible visual web part. So one strategy for delivering these Silverlight applications is to simply create a sandbox compatible visual web part and then embed an object tag inside that visual web part, which will deliver the Silverlight application. A second approach is to simply take a site page, which is also allowed inside the sandbox, and in that site page, uh, use the same kind of object tag to deliver that Silverlight application. In any case, what you're trying to achieve is some code that looks like what we've got here. Uh, so here we have the complete solution. We can see there's a Silverlight application down here at the bottom, and my SharePoint solution is up here at the top. And in this case, I am using a visual web part to deliver it. And I can open up the visual web part here inside my project, scroll down to where the object tag is located, and you'll see that I have the Silverlight control here delivered as an object tag. The key piece here is that we have a source parameter on the object tag that is pointing to the zap file that we want to deliver. So Silverlight applications are all delivered as zap files, XAP extension. In our solution, we are storing that zap file in the site assets library inside of SharePoint. So we can put the zap file inside of a SharePoint library, reference it with a relative uh, URL here in the object tag, and that will deploy that Silverlight application down to the client. Once that Silverlight application is deployed down to the client, then of course we can make 
the public web service call. So in order to make the public web service call, we're going to be doing that through, of course, the Silverlight application. So I'll come into the Silverlight application and we'll open up the code here. Scroll down a little bit and the approach that we're using to call the public web service is we're going to make use of the web client class in Silverlight. The web client class has the ability to make uh, calls to deliver URIs to call the web service and if we scroll down a little bit here you can see that we've got uh, an initiation rather of the uh, of that web client right here here's our client new web client and we're specifying an event here open read completed so the web client is going to make this call asynchronously and then when the read of the web service is completed it's going to call client underscore open read completed and we'll get notification that that asynchronous call is complete now when we call the web service and we're searching for information by artist we have a search button that we will click and that search button will set up a URI here notice that the URI is the same URI that I showed you before where we're searching for artist but we're going to go ahead and replace the name here of the artist with whatever keyword was typed into a text box and then we're going to call the open read async with that URI which will fire off the web client to make that call and of course when it's finished it will come down and fire the open read completed. And the open read completed, we can check and see whether or not we got an error on the call. If we didn't get an error, then we can go ahead and parse the XML that came back. So in this case, what we're doing is we're running a link query on the results that have come back from the query. So e.result will bring me the uh, XML results. And then I'm going to run a uh, query on it that's going to pull out the title, the artist ID, and the artist from that. I can then loop through those results and I'm going to build up a custom, a collection of custom album objects here. And these album objects are going to just have properties for title, artist ID, and artist. And then I've got a grid in my Silverlight solution that I can bind these uh, objects to and it will simply show the results inside of the Silverlight application. So once we get to that point we can see that uh, we've deployed our solution as a sandbox solution and uh, we're calling a public web service. Just to show you here if we go to the SharePoint project and scroll down into the properties in Visual Studio, you'll notice that it is deployed as a sandbox solution, which means that um, our application is running uh, from the gallery inside of the site collection. In this case, you can see the URL here in my test box, Wingtip Server. So now let's go ahead and take a look at that solution in action here. So here we are with the uh, actual Silverlight application. You can see here how we have a place to type in our artist name so we'll type in Alan Parsons and then here's the search button that will invoke the web client uh, to do our search so we go ahead and click on that you can see that it's searching it takes a moment to contact the public web service and we can see now that we have results and you can see we found more than 10 we've got our uh, 10 item limit there inside the grid. So here we are showing that the Silverlight application can in fact call public web services. Now the other side to this is that uh, we're able to call public web services but we also may want to be able to interact with um, SharePoint objects. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to add to this capability uh, the ability to interact with SharePoint objects through the client object model. So as a sample of that what we want to be able to do is click this save button here and then you can see that we have this music brains list right here and this list is going to contain um, all the uh, items that we found. So the idea is to just simply copy these items over into this list right here. And you can see here that the list is empty at the moment. And if we come back to our client object model uh, solution here, what we can do is go ahead and now click in our Silverlight application this save button. And when we do that, it will write out the results to our list for us. And if we scroll down, you can see that the right to the list has succeeded now. And then when we go to our Music Brains list, we do a quick, quick uh, refresh on the page, you can see, in fact, we've written everything out. If we come back to our solution, 
we can see how that code was run by scrolling down to the save button. Here's the implementation of the save button. And again, we're using that client object model. So here's a client context. We get a client context against the site that we're interested in uh, uh, saving the data to. In this case, just that client OM site. We can get the music brains list on the client side by simply uh, working through the context and saying dot web, which is the site, lists, which is the collection of all the lists on the site, get by title, and providing that uh, title of the list. Then for each one of the albums that we've retrieved inside of our collection, we're going to build up a list item creation information object. The list item creation information object is used to create new items in the list uh, through the client object model. So we do an add item with the list item creation information, set the artist ID, title, and artist, call an update on that list, and now on that li new list item, and now in order to execute all of that, we actually have to send that information from the client over to the server. And that's going to happen when we call the execute query async method. And when you use the client object model in Silverlight, you have to call uh, over to the server asynchronously. So you're going to send all your operations over to be uh, performed by the server and then provide succeed and fail listeners that are going to be callbacks to tell you whether or not uh, you've succeeded or failed in the call. And quite simply in, uh, in this solution, all we're really doing is we're just noting in a, uh, in a text box here, just a message display as to whether or not the write has succeeded or failed. So in short, what we've done is we've created this Silverlight application and this Silverlight application makes a call to the public web service and uses the client object model to write back to SharePoint and then in our SharePoint project we've created a visual web part that uses the object tag in order to deliver the Silverlight application to the end user.